Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R to analyze a data set I've never seen before. As usual, the data set comes from the Tidy Tuesday project, which is a wonderful um, project by the R for Data Science online learning community that releases new data sets once, um, once a week. So let's see what data set we have to work with uh, this week. All right, it's global student to teacher ratios from UNESCO, which I think is a um, is a United Nations organization. Um, what is UNESCO? I'm just really interested in this. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. This is really exciting. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm really let, let's see what we have to find out. I'm really interested in education, certainly. So it's um, let's see what we can learn about global student to teacher ratios. Country level data, okay. It's based on an article by Data is Plural. All right. Um, question. Uh, the question. I'm not going to read too much for this, the the spoilers, but the question is: Is there a connection between smaller class size and higher student achievement? We have a bunch of variables here. Okay, let's go ahead and read the data. Go into R, create a new RMD. I'm going to save it as student teacher ratios and let's get started. I usually start with library tidyverse. Open up my student ratio data set, 5,000 observations. And what is that? Looks like eight um, variables. All right, there's a Julit indicator I don't know what that means. It looks like there's a unique identifier for maybe each, hmm, is that, uh, oh, for each identifier, uh, for each indicator. Okay, so I think that this means that these two are redundant with each other. I think, not 100% sure. We have a three letter country code. I'm a little more accustomed to two letter country codes. We can work with any of them. And we have a country name here too, so we can um, work with that. There's year, um, the, uh, this, I think, will be the, let's see, student-teacher ratio. So lower means few, fewer students per teacher. Um, there's some metadata and codes and then flags. Okay, so an example is, I don't know what the character means, but this is, would say here there's an estimation. Okay, uh, yeah, like some are UIS estimations, some are national estimations, looks like. I can do just if I want to understand some of the issues that might come up in the data, I can do a quick count and say, most of them don't have any flags. Some of them tell us the data is not applicable. Some of us tell us it's estimated. I think mostly we're gonna, um, we probably can ignore um, those flags a lot of the time. It looks like we sometimes have four uh, points of data centers. We only have say two. Like here, this variable looks like we only have two years for um, Egypt in this data set. Uh, okay. All right, what years do I have? Am I measuring here? We do usually start with a lot of counting. Looks like we have data for 2015, 16, and 14 for uh, most of the data, and then rare, only rarely do we have 2018 data, not always 2017. So it looks like these are going to be our, our sweet spot three years. Um, let's see, what indicators do we tend to have? These counts are the kind of thing that I would graph. They're mostly me finding out, um, uh, yeah, they're mostly me finding out like what data is missing here. And it looks like we almost always have primary education, um, not always secondary education. Secondary education, I'm, and my understanding would be like, actually, I don't know 100%. Oh, here it is. We see that it's lower secondary education, primary, upper secondary, pre-primary, secondary, Tertiary. All right, my get so my understanding. Upper secondary. I don't understand how where these order comes from. Orders come from. What is secondary education? My assumption was that it was okay. Looks like mostly high school. Okay, and then tertiary education. My guess would mean college. Not sure. Uh, universities, trade schools, colleges, okay, it differs across some versus and such. And primary, it sounds like, would be before what I'd consider high school, grades 9 through 12. 
uh, when people are generally 14 to 18 years old. All right, so that tells us a, a lot about what we have and we might not have. Well, only, um, looks like we have about half as much data on tertiary education as we do on primary education. Okay, so we've learned a little about what data we have, and now, let's see. I probably, I'm gonna start with the data we have the most on. Let's start with primary education. Year equals, what year do we have the most data on? 2015. Yeah, it looks like we have about um, 180 countries. That's a, a solid majority of the countries in the world, depending on the count, usually a uh, list of countries we have in the, in the low 200 range. Um, and what I usually do is, after I filter for one interesting uh, set of data, I might be interested in descending student ratio. All right, so we have six um, in Malawi, and Rwanda looks like we're looking at like 50, 60 to 70 students for every teacher. Wow, uh, that's really large class sizes. And if we went all the way down, we see is Luxembourg, Liechtenstein. These are some of the richest countries in the in the world. Kuwait, these are some of the richest countries uh, in the world. And I know how we can pull that data out, uh, and we might just do so in a minute. Um, okay, and generally what's showing is small is... Richer countries are going to have smaller are going to have lower student teacher ratios. Now we don't have much other data right here besides um, we don't have really have much data here besides the student to teacher ratios. There's still a lot that we can do with this, and maybe we will in one second. Okay, what I'm going to start with. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we could make a graph. Uh, so pardon me. I could. We mean we could make a map. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea in general to start with something like, okay, I'm going to start here and say, uh, what have the, um, let's see, the highest student te teacher ratios. I could start with like, take your top uh, 16, do a, um, you've, if you've watched these screencasts before, you've seen me do this before. FCT reorder country by student ratio. Forward flip, geom call, did I miss any step there? Yeah, uh, student teacher ratio. Uh, I might, so here I'm looking at top 16, but I actually could change it to be the 16 highest and lowest. Uh, so I could say slice or 10 highest lowest, one to 10, and then here's a bit of a funky step I can do. Oh, so if you haven't seen slice before, slice says only get these columns, uh, these uh, rows out. I want the 16, the 10 highest, I've already arranged this in descending order, and the 10 lowest. So see the sequence of n minus 10 to n. Oops. I meant to put a C around those. This is a little step where I'm trying to get this the 10 highest and lowest. Once I do that, I'm not so sure it's a it's a bar plot anymore. Um, I'm not sure. It's a little odd as a bar plot, but I can quickly throw in an X equals, oop, I meant Y equals zero. Uh, so I can say what countries with the high, so I can say, uh, let me see, countries, with the highest student and lowest student teacher ratios. So slice was a way of just grabbing the 10 highest, 10 lowest. Um, I did. I neglected to filter not is NA um, student ratio. Uh, it's the highest and lowest student to teacher ratios. And let's see, sub, um, I can do subtitles things at 10, but it's pretty obvious, I think, what it is. So what I'll do is throw in a X. I don't need an X. It's clearly a country. and say student-teacher ratio. So immediately I can tell, uh, just based on my knowledge of countries, that it's pretty correlated with, um, with country income. Like I said, richest countries, uh, poorest countries. I might, if I were writing a blog post, if I say it looks, I'd probably repeat exactly what I just, the sentence I just said. It looks based on my knowledge of geography that the, um, these include the, what is, um, 
that uh, that student to teacher ratio is negatively correlated with a country's wealth wealth some of the richest countries Blah, blah, blah. I, I finished that sentence off and I throw in a to do if I want to write that sentence later. I've said it already. So I say this just based on my understanding. I could build a map, which if I, if I made this into a map, would probably look basically the same. It would, uh, the, the, no, no, sorry, when I say the same, it would probably lead me towards some of the same conclusions. The US, actually, I don't know where the US is here, uh, but I'd, I'd see like there are, a lot of, there are lots of small uh, countries with, um, that are pretty rich and have small high student to teacher ratios. I should would also note, but there are clear exceptions. Some rich countries like Switzerland, like the US, UK, and Switzerland don't appear in the low student to teacher ratios. While other, there's just some I could, while Fairly, a relatively lower income countries like Cuba, pretty sure uh, Greece, and I think Georgia do. We're gonna see. Um, let's. We'll keep an eye out for those and other outliers. So this was me just thinking. I wanted to um, write a bit as I was going al uh, along. What am I going to keep an eye out for outliers? Well, this is one of those times when I'm working on a Tidy Tuesday project that I know I want to, um, right, here it is, yes, that I know I want to bring in other data. Uh, in particular, probably interested in bringing in GDP. My go-to place for that is WDI. Do I have the package? Good. The WDI package is World Development Indicators. So it allows me to download for a particular country in a particular year. In this case, I'm looking at 2015. Uh, student teacher ratio 2015. I'm, I'm bringing in a quick step here. We're going to separate the data out. So that was okay. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, highest, uh, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, 2015 data, which means I want WDI. Oops. I'm going to ask for all countries, yep, indicator, I need to remind myself, it's WDI search, oh, default is GDP, uh, WDI is a, a search, it's a bit of a funny function, I remember this, I had to view it, it's, it gives me a matrix, I want to look for GDP current, oh, such an odd, uh, all I want is just like, just want GDP, GDP per, pardon me, per capita. So I'm actually gonna throw in GDP per capita. Let's see how that looks. Growth, GDP per capita, current US, ah, here it is. I think I recognize this one, NY, GDP, PCAP, CD. GDP per capita in US dollars. Uh, all right, so if I say indicator equals, here we are and start equals 2015 and equals 2015. So I just want the 2015 data because that's what I'm um, looking at here. I'm gonna make it a table diff. Here we go. We have a ISO two, two letter character code. Oh, I can throw in an extra equals true. I didn't know this till now, because I prob but I probably want the three letter character code. ISO 3C, here it is. And, um, here we go, longitude, longitude, latitude, don't need that, but here's my GDP. So I'm gonna actually select these. Um, what were these called in this column? It's always nice just to be really convenient. Country code equals ISO 3C, GDP per capita equals this one. So now I'll call it GDP per capita. So I just grabbed the 2015 GDP per capita from the WDI World Development Indicators package. It's good to have um, some of these packages, some packages like this in your back pocket. Notice that we can grab a lot of other World Development Indicator um, variables. Some could, we could have grabbed gross national income, which is very similar. Uh, we could have grabbed some things about education. I think we probably will. I'm not gonna do that quite yet, because right now I'm interested in um, 
GDP per capita, but we're going to start here. Okay. And if I take this, uh, what I'll do is take student teacher ratio and do an inner join with my GDP per capita by country code. That, oop. Was it really a factor here? Oh, I don't love that. I'm going to change this select and do it. It didn't really hurt anything, but I'm going to turn this into a transmute and change how I downloaded it just a little bit. Here we go. Uh, all right, so now I can say, let's plot your student, mm, let's plot your GDP per capita on the x-axis, your student to teacher ratio on the y-axis. Before I make that plot, I can't believe I didn't look at um, the student teacher ratio on a histogram first. Okay, I just want to notice big peak 10 to 25 and then a long tail. I might want to put that on a log axis. I'm not 100% sure. What's it look like on a log axis? Eh, probably better. Like a little more like, it's not a bell curve, but it's not that crazy either. And I don't think the extremes are um, worth it. So the reason I did that is I wanted to say, oop, geom point, and let's not forget, GDP per capita is basically always going to be on, on a log scale, and it looks like we're going to put the um, the student teacher ratio on a log scale as well. All right, so this was the what, what I was getting at with my earlier observation in this paragraph. This confirms there's a negative correlation between country's wealth and its student teacher. Ratio. That's a correlation, not they were not just a causation. Um, in general, when you when you look at, at indicators by country, they're going to, like a lot of stuff is just going to be correlated in one way or another with GDP. I wonder whether some of these low. I wonder whether Cuba is one of these points. Uh, these unusual outliers. Um, I'm guessing. I'm gonna guess wildly. This is Cuba and Greece. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I wonder what these are that are relatively rich countries with a high student to, uh, t student to uh, teacher ratio. Uh, so what I'm gonna say is, let's see, student teacher ratio, pardon me, that's the y-axis, GDP per capita, always good to throw in subtitle in 2015. All right, and um, now I'm gonna add a step where I say AES label equals country, V just equals one, H just equals one, and um, check overlap equals true. I neglected to put a title on this one. So let's say, sometimes I, I put a question in the title, sometimes I put an answer. In this case, I'm gonna put GDP per capita and student ratio are negatively correlated, sure. I neglected to put a plus here. Here we go. I wasn't quite right about um Greece and, and Cuba. Here it is. Okay. Georgia, Cuba. Jo oh, yeah, I was close. Georgia, Cuba. Here's Greece. Here's Kuwait. Um, and uh, yeah, Georgia's definitely an unusual case. Oh, this is actually a little interesting. We, I think we see a lot of... um. My understanding, my geography is not great. My understanding is a lot of these are Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Moldova. Uh, we see that on this side. Where is the United States? Uh, sometimes I want to put population here as well. Uh, that way you can put, population is great for size on a country graph. All right, so if I look at um, here, uh, oh yeah. So if I, if I, let's do WDI search again. I'm splitting these up into a couple of chunks. WDI is a wonderful package anytime we're looking uh, between countries. Uh, oops. Search for population. It's going to be 20 different variables for population. I just want, I just want the one. Uh, population view, percentage of population, etc., etc. Wow. Uh, Uh, okay, what I'm going to do, it's a little, this is a little interesting, as data frame filter, mm. it was a matrix when I got it back, oh, it's a factor, that's great, filter string detect, 
name population. I really don't know my way around. Uh, there might be an easier way to, to um, look at this. Oh, leave it as a table diff. Here it is, population census. Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is arrange it by um, string length of name. Population total. Ooh, I like that one. I probably could have just looked for the word total. I'm gonna keep this code. I might need it more when I keep filtering things down. All right, so SP pop total. I believe you can get multiple indicators here. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, and I'm gonna call this indicators. And I need to change that transmute. Here it is. All right, so what I'm gonna do is say indicators raw, indicators, and just change, because as you change your code, you change your variables, um, and select, hmm. I'm actually gonna, I might be using lots of indicators. I'm gonna keep the full name of them. Instead of transmute nuts. I'm gonna do select, which means ISO 3C, I need to redo my, um, Steps a little bit. I like to keep data as clean as I can along the way, and sometimes you change up your balance of that. All right, um, I join with indicators now. Hmm. Oh, uh, I changed the name to be. Here it is. It's nicely precise anyway. This is like, it's more informative than just saying GDP per capita. This is the kind of thing someone could use to recreate the data set. All right, so that's one for GDP per capita. But let's throw in another aesthetic. Let's say in GeoPoint, not the, um, not the labels, I'll say size equals, what's the other one called? SP pop total. I'm gonna need a log scale, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's, this looks pretty reasonable to me. Um, okay, and while we're at it, you know what's interesting is I could probably throw in region here, couldn't I? Ooh, let's try that. So what I'll do is say, select this, and region, it's a factor. It's gotta be a factor. Well, I'll throw in region, and let's do color equals region. So this helps, um, see remember I mentioned Europe was ki kind of looked like it was on the, the bottom end of here. That is Europe tends to have smaller class sizes. That was my theory. Looking at them now, I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, we noticed uh, most of the poorest countries in the world are Sub-Saharan Africa. Those also have, um, as well as some in South Asia, and those also tend to have the highest student-teacher ratios. Um, there are some exceptions, um, but like outliers like Angola, I can't see the United States. But one thing this tells me is um, there's a trick I like with check overlap, which is that if you put something, um, you're gonna have to remember this, is it if you put the country first in the data set, its name will appear first. See, I wanna see United States here. You know, this is one of the biggest countries in the world uh, after a few like China, India. So I kind of want it to show up and um, the way I can do that is by, here we are, arrange, I think it's arranged by population. It's either arranged that or arranged descending. Oh, I'm uh, pretty sure arranged descending. Biggest ones first. Here we go, okay. So it might look, the graph might look the same, but what this means is, uh, this is really relevant when combined with check overlap equals true. Where's check overlap? There's check overlap equals true. What this means is that, uh, it had the choice whether to show United States of America or a few other countries. This time we showed the U.S. because it's a bigger country. Uh, same reason we can see China. I'm sure we can see India here um, and a lot of the other most populated countries in the world. In fact, we could consider doing a, um, a top N here. It's probably a good idea. What to say is top N 100 by SP pop total. Wrong. Uh, for, uh, for 100 largest countries by population, 
the world in 2015. Why did I do it that way? I did it because we generally want to focus our correlation on larger countries. The data is often better. It's often um, uh, it's more meaningful, less likely to be these very small states like Luxembourg. This could be a controversial choice. There are there are definitely other ways to to, um, to do it. Should I keep that? Eh, you know, I didn't mind seeing those given that we had the population. I'm gonna skip that step. All right, and a few more things I would do to, to clean this up. What I'd say is color equals capital R region. I like that, but more importantly, population. And we throw in a scale, oops, I've always put a layer, your layers first, your geomes first. Scale, size, continuous, labels equals um, comma format, scales, comma format. Uh, I just like to have, here we are. Yeah, I guess that, that's pretty reasonable. Maybe we make the range a little bigger. Um, is it range or, yes, it's range. What range does is say, I want the big points to be big and the small points to be small. Kind of like that, really helps focus the eye on some of the bigger uh, countries here. Okay, could really even make this, does it get any smaller? I think in small countries, just like to really focus a bit, okay. All right, uh, so this tells us, this is a class kind of correlation between, um, in terms of countries and student-teacher ratio. All right, I'm going to finish uh, cleaning this data by throwing in a theme, this plot, I should say, my favorite theme, theme light. And we show it by um, popula uh, by population. This is about as much data as I generally want to get under a graph. We could add a best fit line. I, I honestly don't think it adds that much um, here. But if we did want to, it would be geom smooth. Okay. Look at your, um, your outliers. Isn't that something? Okay. So this is, um, I said GDP per, uh, this is a, a solid graph. Now let's look at educate looking at education indicators. So let's actually look at a couple other. Um, we've we've done a this is a solid graph about halfway through our time, and we've looked at um at GDP versus student teacher ratio. Uh, that's just a correlation. Again, it's really really not a it's extremely not a causation. Um, go. Okay. Uh, but but now that we've we've got it, we've done this started this trick. Of looking at um at our indicators, we can really start to um go. We can really start to look for anything here. We can look, for example, in this room, for the word education. All right, so we can look for things like what percentage of people. So this is, oh, I for, I completely forgot. This is primary. Um, there's primary and there's secondary. Uh, in primary education. Hmm. We have a few ways we can um we can work we can, we can uh use this. Oh, it might be a little interesting to compare primary and secondary. Am I gonna copy paste this code? Yeah, I think I might. Okay, where's my student teacher issue 2015? Okay, I'm gonna copy paste this code a little bit. Primary versus secondary education. Before I look at other education indicators, which I really want to, I might I remember that I only have, I've only looked at a part of the Tidy Tuesday data, which is um, well, it's well, why not why don't we look at, at more of it? Uh, we remember that our most common indicators, in all I'm gonna call it all just be all the indicators. Filter. Eh, I don't even need to save that. I can just say filter indicator in primary education, secondary education. What I love about this is this state is actually pretty tidy to be joined right away. And we do almost everything the same way with one exception. We throw in a facet wrap by um, indicator. What this shows is that uh, 
let's see, the, the correlation exists for both primary and secondary. It looks to me like it gets weaker in secondary, so everything for one thing drops in secondary education, student to teacher ratios. Uh, not everything actually now that I'm looking at, it, but in general, there are fewer really large class sizes. It looks like we're probably, the one issue is it looks like we're probably missing some data. Uh, so for example, I think Rwanda is missing from this side, for example. We might, there might not be enough data on secondary education in, in Rwanda. Uh, and and uh, when you get to that, you, you can see some, some weird things can pop up. It looked like it was lower ratios, but maybe it's just a few country. Um, maybe the countries that are missing just tend to have higher um, rates. So what I'm going to do is say only countries that have both uh, data sets. So let's throw in, what I'll do is throw in a group by country filter n equals two. So this ensures that every, uh, never hurts to throw in an ungroup. Mm, then maybe I was, perhaps I was wrong and we do have um, filter country equals Rwanda. Okay, we did have both. Oh, that's just that's interesting. I just missed it. Um, Rwanda has a much lower student teacher ratio in secondary education than they do in primary education. I don't see the point here, uh, the the um, dot here, but that's that's uh, interesting. Nineteen B, yeah, somewhere around here. All right, um, maybe right here. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. All right, uh, I wonder what the ratios are. As soon as I learn something like that, I really just. I just want to know secondary primary education and here we go remove the filter keep this graph nice to have it uh, looks like eh, similar correlation maybe eh, weaker correlation I think um, and suddenly I'm interested what are the differences if I look at what are the differences what I do is say take your indicator take your country code take your eh, country and take your student ratio spread indicator student ratio. Before I do that, I, it's kind of nice to say um, indicator equals, there's a package I, I really like called snake case. If you don't have it, it might be just kind of handy. I can say two snake case of indicator. And now I can say mutate ratio equals secondary education divided by primary education. What this does is look at my at my ratio between um, how much uh, higher and or lower is the um, is the student teacher ratio in secondary versus primary, and if I say let me see arrange the sending ratio, let's see is some countries like Thailand um, secondary education are much more much more crowded um, uh, class sizes. On the other end of the spectrum, we have. Benin, uh, Bhutan, Rwanda, we saw. Um, we saw, we see large gaps here uh, as well. Um, and I wonder then if I did a plot of primary education to secondary education, I'm guessing they're gonna be correlated. Um, Probably throw both onto an onto a log scale, a log log plot. Here we go. Definitely correlated. Uh, these are big gaps. One of these is going to be Rwanda, and um, throw in a geom text. I'll use the same one I did uh, above, where we ensure checking the overlaps. All right, here's Rwanda, and um, I really do wonder like. Is there a pattern here? Is it mediated by income? Huh. I don't know. It's something to think about. I'm going to keep that at the end. Um, appendix, second, primary versus secondary uh, correlation. I'm keeping that at the end. In the meantime, let's stick to our primary education uh, numbers. Public expenditure on education as a percentage of GDP. Oh, that's one interesting one. Um, now, let's see. Education, education, education. So many variables we could choose. So many. 
uh, enrollment in sec secondary education, spelling mistake. Uh, let's see. Isn't it a spelling mistake? It pops up multiple times. I hope so. Uh, let's find, let's check for the word enrollment with actually spelled the way I would spell it. School enrollment, second, secondary, we see male, female. Let's try searching for secondary education. There's so many variables I can compare it to. I'm looking just for generally interesting ones. Um, enrollment and sex, secondary education, both sexes. Uh, let's Yeah, let's compare class size to enrollment in secondary education. This is going to be really heavily confounded, but I'm just interested in um, in grabbing this variable. So let's throw this into the indicators we look at. So one issue with these indicators, it doesn't tell me how many countries we have data for. And here it is, filter not is NA, SE, SEC, enroll. 193 countries we have data for, that feels pretty good to me. Oh, this is not as a percentage, says as a total. Uh, let's look again at here. I really just want a percentage. I really just want a percentage enrollment uh, in, um, in education. Oh, we could also look at something like literacy. We could look at lots of things. Yeah, let's start by looking at literacy. That'd be fun. Literacy rate. Okay, let's start here. You can also look at things like gender gap and literacy, but yeah, let's start literacy. I could have divided this by population. No, I couldn't have, of course. Um, I need to pop divide it by the population in that age group, uh, which would certainly be a little bit confusing. Oh, nuts, we don't have data on this one. Filter not is in a, oops. I think it liked um, this column. Oops, let me see. Nope, didn't have any data on that. Did have it for male and or female. Nope. Okay, so it doesn't have um, that data. Literacy rate, literacy, literacy, literacy. I am gonna do WDI literacy rate. Cause I just wanna like adult total. Maybe this is the one to look for. Generally like, sometimes Google will just tell you which is the right one to, like with, uh, with its first result, we'll tell you which one to look for. All right, so literacy rate, adult total. Right, literacy rate, adult total. There it is. Literacy rate, adult total. Okay. Oh, I need to go up a few to, oops. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna do a little experimentation to figure out the right indicators. All right. Looks like we don't have as much. Oh, this is on um, some various aggregates, which is not which is not filter not is an A. Uh, only seventy seven countries we actually have this for. Hmm. Well, that's a little frustrating, but we'll um we can still use it. Okay. What I would say is let's say other um other indicators. Certainly literacy rate is one outcome that we're interested in, in terms of uh, its relationship to, pr to primary secondary education and so on. Uh, what I would say is, let's see, I see, uh, is, join it, filter not is NA of um, the literacy rate. 
I want the literacy rate, this is a little bit of strange of me, but I want it to be between zero and 100. Uh, pardon me, between zero and one, rather between zero and 100. That way I can make a bit of a better graph out of it. And uh, because I'll show you why in a moment. If I do student ratio to literacy, I expect a correlation, but I, but I wonder if it's just GDP. Well, let's find out in a moment. Actually, I'm gonna do it a little differently. Do you think that liter that GDP and literacy rate are correlated? But they generally are. Uh, but yeah, oh, uh, always, always GDP per capita on a log scale. Not as much as one might think. Uh, so we don't have. We only have, like I said, we only have like seventy-seven co uh, countries here. Uh, and let me throw the scale y continuous labels equals scales. Um, percent format. Here we go. This is why I wanted it between zero and one. This ends up being a bit of a better graph. Uh, so imagine these countries. If I throw in my little, where is it? Geom text. Yeah, we have these lower um, uh, income and also low literacy countries, but for the most part. A lot of, so we see really there's kind of an extreme uh, distribution of literacy. We have a lot of countries that are above 80% literate. Um, all right. So yeah, so it's not solely correlated, but it's, um, it's a little curious. Uh, I just, yeah, I just want to show that for a moment. All right. Now, if I ask, what if I ask the question, how does the student teacher ratio uh, relate to, to, um, to literacy. This actually is, oops, I'm missing something. Oh, uh, it's that I have both lower and sec, I actually have many things here, uh, because I neglected to rerun this line, this line, this line, to do just primary education. Is this the line? This is the line. Great. So what this shows is in general the higher student teacher ratios, yes, they kind of are um, correlated, not necessarily. Uh, sorry, not uh, in the sense that the ones that, that a lot of the ones that have these um, really high student teacher ratios. We also saw these are some of the poorest countries. Um, and we see these have the largest student teacher ratios and also by far the large the smallest literacy. But in this region, it doesn't seem like there necessarily is the strongest uh, correlation. Um, I don't even know how many countries made it into this group. Do we really not have literacy rates for this many uh, countries? It's, it's remarkable. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, the, um, did I say we really just have 77? Let's see. We have 29. Okay, so that's like just, we just don't have enough data. Why do we only have twenty nine? I guess because when you when you combine the two, uh, they must have a um, student teacher ratio and must have a literacy rate. It got even smaller. Okay, this yeah, this feels like a dead end. I just don't have enough countries. What other um, outcomes could we look? at? What other education outcomes could we look at besides literacy rate? Uh, let's do another search for education. I want to look at secondary education participation. Enrollment in secondary education. I see um, people, all right, enrollment in secondary ed. I'm look for the word, for that is any ENR for enrollment. Percentage of students in se secondary education, I can't even read that. Enrolled in vocational general programs. So, you know, I just want to know the percentage of the population. Yeah, I search. Enrollment. So odd how this word popped up. Can I do, can I do that? Okay, it looks like I can do regular expressions. This, today I learned that the, the WIDI search wants a regular expression. Okay, so I'm looking at enrollment in secondary education. 
both sexes, did I find whether this data existed? All right, that was gonna be one of the things that I checked. I wonder what the SE stands for. I don't know my way around the WDI that much. I often get things like GDP out of it, but SE, secondary enrollment. Again, it's the number. I wanna know the percentage. I wonder if I throw in a, here we go, oh, I see, there should be a percentage somewhere. Throw in a regular expression and then a percent sign. Under age and wrong percent. Mm. How long do I have? Over age enrollment ratio in primary education male, percentage, percentage, percentage. Uh, Secondary education. See, I arranged it by size, but I can look at this like this. Enrollment. I'm gonna give up for a moment and say WDI education indicators. I wonder if just there is a good set somewhere of education statistics so I can stop digging into this. Uh, school enrollment. School enrollment. Let me look for the word school enrollment. Primary, ah, here it is. School enrollment. Primary male, primary female, huh, can't get both sexes. That's curious. Secondary male, I'm gonna start with this. All right, I'm gonna start with male school enrollment. Maybe we'll combine in female enrollment as well. Let's see what we get. There's my percentages. Oop. 165 countries, I think that's enough. Okay, and uh, what this, so this will be enrollment male. And let's throw in female as well. I think it was just the same with Effie. All right, so this is secondary. So, we're using, so why am I looking at secondary enrollment? It's because I'm interested in, pri I'm starting with, with uh, primary school sizes and I'm curious, how does that correlate to secondary school enrollment? Uh, so how does this correlate with say people continuing on uh, to secondary school and then potentially we do uh, tertiary uh, education as well if we have stats for it. Um, and hmm, while looking at these two, it's always good to like, to get to, get to know your new variables a little bit first. I'm gonna call this data set joined. So you know why I joined it? So I can have autocomplete for these variable names. And what I'm curious about is, let's look at our distribution first of, let's start with our distribution of male enrollment. All right, and female enrollment. I'm guessing generally lower. A little bit hard to tell between these two, these two graphs. Uh, and let's throw in a Comparison between the two highly correlated with some exceptions. Um, somewhere where female enrollment is generally lower than uh, male, some uh, the other direction. Uh, all right, and then I can probably say, hmm, I could throw countries onto this. I'm guessing it's that's not necessarily where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna start. But I, I'm gonna start. I am gonna say, what is? How does GDP start with secondary? Enrollment equals the average of these two. That way we can stop, I can stop working uh, constantly with um, uh, with, ma with male, female variables separately. So what I'll say is secondary enrollment defined as male, female divided by two. This assumes a country's school age population is equally split. That's not necessarily between men and uh, male and female. Not necessarily true. It looks from this data like it's not just, just not gonna make a big difference either way. So what I'm gonna say is, how does 
secondary enrollment correlate with GDP, never forget uh, to do a scale um, to put GDP on a log axis. Okay, so this shows is that secondary school enrollment generally correlated with GDP. So I'm gonna throw that in there. It's a good thing to know as we start um, GDP per capita, why is secondary school enrollment. This didn't use any of the Tidy Tuesday data. This is just between two world development indicator uh, va um, variables. So uh, I'm going to use my favorite layer, this geom text, and uh, arrange descending. Which one was population? It was um, SP pop total. Just want to take a look at those. All right, descending. Yeah, so like U.S. pretty high. One of the higher GDP per capita. Pretty high secondary school enrollment. Uh, not as high as few other countries. All right. So I just want to show that correlation. We need to keep that in mind because we're about to do another graph. Here we go. I'm going to move this joint up there. Now, and what what graph am I doing here? What I'm doing is saying, um, how does Instead of GDP per capita, we're going to use what we what we used um, work with today. We say use student ratio to secondary school enrollment. So this is, and well, I'll leave it on an X on a, on a log scale, student teacher ratio in primary school. The question is, how does it correlate with secondary school enrollment? Now we generally do see that it um uh that the larger the student teacher ratio in, in sec primary school, the small the um the higher the secondary school in ratio. Sorry, the, the larger the class, the lower the enrollment in secondary school. I'm guessing the lower the enrollment in primary school as well. Um so we do see this correlation. But we know, because we just made this graph, that this is confounded by GDP as well. And this is where making scatter plots by themselves is gonna get you into a little bit of trouble. So Here's uh, examining the confounding variable. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at our joint data. I'm going to do a linear model. If I just said, how does um, secondary school enrollment, how does secondary school enrollment vary as a function of um, student ratio? This is a linear model. We often throw this into a um, summary to see something about it. We could also have used tidy from my broom package. Now, what we say, see is, oh, uh, as student-teacher ratio um, increases, the um, as student-teacher ratio increases, uh, the, the secondary enrollment generally drops. In fact, this is a pretty, yeah, um, well, the, the effect sizes, how can we define this effect size? This would say every um, student teacher ratio. Oh yeah, this would be a full percentage point and a half that the um, enrollment goes down for every one the student teacher ratio goes up. Uh, now we probably we we actually already saw that we that we generally put this on a log scale the student teacher uh, teacher ratio. Notice that um, uh, log x scale, and this is actually I think going to make the model slightly better. How can we tell the model is better? Well, right now it explains 0.71. Um, uh, adjusted R squared, maybe we'll go with, with uh, 0.70 is an R squared, that's percentage of variance explained. If I change this to log two, well, I expect it to go up. It goes down a bit. That's interesting. Okay, uh, If I, th I wonder if I dropped out the X, ah, yeah, looks pretty linear. So maybe, honestly, maybe they both work pretty well. Maybe we just drop the log. Um, oh, but that, but that doesn't get to the important part. So that was a question in terms of how do we define these coefficients. Interesting, but not all that, that meaningful yet. What's really, really important is we're missing a big honking confounding factor, which is, um, uh, which is GDP per capita. Wealthy countries tend to have, we saw, tend to have smaller class sizes, also higher um, participation in, in secondary school. So, which remember is 
high school, ages 14 to 18, grades 9 to 12, that area. So what I'm going to do is say, add a second thing. Log 2 of the GDP per capita, which if I remind myself is NY, GDP, PCAP, etc. So there's a couple things to notice that would happen here. First, really importantly, our adjusted R squared went up. It became a better model. But secondly, the um this this is actually ah, this is a perfect example. Wow, what a yeah, this is a good example of a confounded factor. What happened is the, the effect of student ratio decreased. Uh, so it used to be, um, let, let, me, let me show that one more time. It would have been that every increase of one in the student-teacher ratio, that is like from 10 students per teacher to 11 students per teacher, made the um, secondary school enrollment go down by 1.5%. We add in the effect of GDP and um, this would say every time you double GDP, your um, secondary school enrollment goes up by about 4.2%. And every time we, and as soon as we did that, what it said is um, our effect decrease, size decreased from 1 .5, negative 1.58 to just negative 0.98, about negative 1. Uh, so we also notice it actually got less significant. It's as if the significant, the statistical significance of these two effects um, actually, the, actually um, got split between, the, the statistical significance got split between these two effects. One on the, the effect of income, the other uh, the effect of student-teacher ratio. Now it's still now just having removed one confounding factor definitely doesn't mean that it's um that it's not confounded by other factors. It doesn't and it certainly doesn't mean it's causative. Uh, it could just be that um ah, we actually saw this a moment ago. We saw expenditure. Maybe let's bring this in. Um, but before before I move on to one or we'll do one more um I'll bring in one more indicator. I really want to point that out. That notice the um notice how uh, the, the effect size change got smaller um, once we recognize that income has, a, um, has an effect as well. Okay, I'm gonna throw in, let's see. I'm gonna do two more. Uh, one is, I'm actually curious about something. If I bring in region, we saw maybe a bit of a region effect. This is a factor with a solid number of variables. What happens there? Ah. So um, what I was curious was, does, the, does your region have an impact on your um, enrollment, uh, leaving aside the other factors like student ratio and, um, and GDP per capita? And the answer is generally no. Notice that Europe and the, most of these don't even have a significant p-value. Some of them kind of flirt with it, but, but not if we correct it for the multiple testing. Uh, the R squared, the adjusted R squared, eh. It went up, but I'm, I'm not, I don't feel great about it. If I really wanted to examine this, what I would do would the effect, did um, region have uh, explain any variation in, um, in secondary enrollment alongside student ratio in log two? I generally would, would run an ANOVA first. Oops, it's, that's right, AOV, analysis of variance. Analysis of variance. And what this shows is region, uh, as a whole, across all these levels, eh, maybe, statistically significant, has some impact. Um, generally, we're seeing, like, uh, what it looks like is Sub-Saharan Africa might generally just have lower enrollment, even taking into account student ratio and um, income. And Europe, Central Asia might have slightly higher in enrollment. But again, statistical significance, I, I don't know that I even would include this. Uh, and it's, um, it's a lot to really throw in. Okay, so that was uh, taking a quick look at uh, ANOVA for adding a categorical variable, the factor of region, to the data. Now you did that probably because I already had it. But I wanted to check, um, I mentioned a moment ago, ex uh, the ex public expenditure on secondary school. That might be another uh, confounding factor. Uh, and it's probably related to GDP. Uh, but let's see, all right. Where would I, throw, where would I grab this? All right, with, for my indicator data. I'll say is secondary education expen oh secondary I'm looking for the word public public 
Expenditure and education. Okay. Ah, public expenditure and education secondary as percentage of GDP. Okay, so I'm going to throw this in. That likely is... I wonder if the percentage is correlated with GDP, with GDP per capita. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, we can check that out, but here we go. I'm going to grab this uh, variable and I'm going to say, let's see, where's my linear model? Uh, what I'm going to do is throw in one more. Uh, I'm going to throw this um, this additional indicator in, put it into the middle, so I'm going to change my neck, my following step. Where's my LM? Here it is. What's the distribution? Of um, I just had that variable. What's the distribution? If I did a histogram. I really thought I had that one. CXPD. Oh, it did not like that one. Let's see. Oh, let me just try it with um, while leaving aside the secondary education. Can I download that one. Nope. Okay. Well, this is the day that we learned that the WDI package is maybe not quite reliable. All right. What if I search within this for expenditure? Expenditure on secondary education. It kind of looks the same, SEXPD. I'm going to try grabbing this one. Expenditure in secondary education, WDI. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, looks like it was able to download that one. And it was called. I wonder how many uh, filter not is in a. We have ninety nine countries. Hmm. Oh, well, it's maybe it's the best we can do on this one. What I'd say is, let me take a look at our indicators. Let's see. And I go down to my linear my model. We run the line these couple lines. Take a look at joined filter not is in a. And uh, it needs to be. This one, SEXPD expenditure on secondary. I don't know what the ZS stands for. Man, having only 71 observations is going to be a bit of a drag, but I'm going to nevertheless work just with that subset. And we'll say joined. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say joined filter not is in a this variable. And I'm going to fit it with data equals dot. It's a way of me saying this pipe feeds in as the second argument to this function. Okay. And I'm going to throw in the extra step of SEXPD. So what I'm going to say is, uh, see how the, the percentage expenditure on um, education might relate to, uh, to the enrollment in secondary edu in education. And kind of astonishingly, it doesn't at all. Like there is no sign that this is this is a better fit uh, at all, or this is these two are correlated. Oh, hmm, that's a bit odd. Like if I did a plot joined, I didn't like the fact that I was giving up some of these these data points, but let's, let's see the relationship between this and secondary enrollment, which again is what we're trying to predict with all these mod this modeling. Yep, yeah, doesn't really look like there's a correlation between the percentage, this percentage of government expenditure on Oh, as a, as a percentage of government expenditure, of all government expenditure education. That's a bit of a weird one. What if I just want to look at government overall uh, expenditure in education, maybe as a percentage of GDP? Uh, 
government expenditure and education total. Let's try this one instead. All right, what I'm gonna do is go through here. If I don't have this one, I'm just gonna give up at that point. But yeah, this is a great site. Like I said, World Bank that runs these uh, WDI um, stats. I'm indicators. Ex, ex, uh, SE expenditure totals. All right, great. I'm gonna get, go ahead and use um, this data set. So I'll rerun the joined line, get that data back. Now say where, all right, we have 88 countries where we have an ex, uh, expenditure GDP. Still doesn't look like the, like the two are correlated. Um, so this is percentage expenditure on GDP. So if I did, G, if I reran that GG plot, hmm, I kind of expected that um, government expenditure in education would be positively correlated with enrollment in uh, like in school, but it looks like that's not the case. This is as what a percentage of GDP. Yeah, that there I was kind of assuming that the um, that uh, some countries would say put a put a lot of priority into education and those would spend more and have um, high enrollment, but it doesn't really look like that there's a con there's a connection there, at least in the 88 countries where we don't have missing data. All right, so I'm gonna drop that variable. Um, honestly, we've done a little too much um, uh, throwing it, removing and adding variables already as it is. Drop that. Didn't hurt to have it. Okay, and this is the end model. Now, what this is suggesting, excuse me. What this is suggesting is that in general, um, you got you. There absolutely is a positive relationship between a country's GDP and its enrollment in secondary education, in like high school. Um, but that effect is also mediated by the student to teacher ratio. It looks like the higher the um, still the the. The higher the student teacher ratio, the less likely people will be enrolled in secondary education. That still doesn't mean it's a causative effect, it could just be a correlation. Um, but this showed how we were able to control for one factor and um, and learned something a bit about the, uh, the data. So this was some examples of how we worked with a linear model to sleuth through some statistical relationships. Um, and uh, I didn't do much prediction here. We didn't do a lot of like, how would we inter how would we take this model? We mostly were interpreting the model. We didn't say, how would we predict for a particular country? Um, but yeah, but it's just, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't do a lot of model evaluation where we said things like, um, how, how would we know whether to trust this data? But I'll tell you one thing we can look at a bit that, that can tell us about whether, how much we can trust uh, this, which is looking at correlations. If I look one more um, analysis, what I'm going to do is take a look at joined data, select just student ratio, secondary enrollment. Remember, both these are between, oh, this is between 0 and 100, not 0 and 1. Uh, and um, the GDP per capita, I'm going to make it log GDP. I'll make it log two, that doesn't really matter. Uh, with, with what I'm about to do with it. And uh, what was the other one? S expenditure, which was SC, XPD total. Eh, I'm not gonna use that one, it's got too much missing data. What I can now do is say, let's find the correlation between them. And where we say, where whenever I do a correlation, I need to say use pairwise complete observations. I can find the sets of correlations between these numbers. And we have a real uh, issue here when we want to use two of these to predict a uh, student ratio, um, which is that, uh, that yes, both secondary enrollment and GDP are, oh, sorry, to predict um, secondary enrollment. Now, sec student ratio is negatively correlated with, um, with secondary enrollment and GDP is positively correlated. But we also see that those two predictors, um, uh, student ratio and log GD and GDP, are also positively correlated with each other. Um, 
let, I'm sorry, this one, negatively correlated with each other. When you have that, uh, you run into the problem of what's called multicollinearity, which makes it really hard to work through a linear model like this. Uh, so I wouldn't, wouldn't take this result too seriously. Generally, you'd want to like dig into some social science to really be able to look more at educational outcomes. Um, all right. All right, well, that concludes our, um, uh, our dig into, uh, into um, student-teacher ratios. In particular, we looked at the countries of the highest and lowest. That got us thinking about GDP, so we ended up looking at um, a comparison of GDP per capita and um, student-teacher uh, ratio, where we used... Um, we, we learned how to bring in other data about per country using the um, WDI package, WDI search, and... WDI functions. Uh, we learn and we learned a little about statistical sleuthing through um, linear models, including um, the use of um, of, of LM uh, to fit a linear model, a little interpretation of its coefficients, and even looking a little at a correlation matrix to get a feel for how these coefficients might work together. All right, thanks for joining me. As always, I had a really great time, and I'll see you next week.